my name is Kara Ann Barrett. Welcome. I'm a wife, mom, counselor, and author, and put your crown on. You can find that on Amazon. It's about your identity in Christ and how God has reached down from heaven and changed our lives forever. And today I have someone whose life was changed forever. And she's a daughter of the king who's going to share her story for God's glory. And I'm pretty excited about this. It's a unique story. And her name is Brianna Johnson. And she's an artist and she's a singer, songwriter, and she's got a story to tell. So welcome, Brianna. Hi. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for having me. You're welcome. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Absolutely. This is a privilege. It really is. <laughs> oh. And so I met you just a little while ago we I found you on TikTok and I'm just going to tell the story real quick because I I scroll through TikTok all the time because I find interesting stories and people and whatnot I'm not the only one I know lots of people do TikTok <laughs> right anyway so I found you and it, the what I saw didn't match up with what I heard because I saw this like usually goth artistic flair and I was hearing Jesus 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 so can you tell like, a little bit about that okay so yeah i know i'm not in my like major overdone goth aesthetic today but yeah so um i i was always into the alternative subculture growing up and in, in my younger years and you know i was kind of rebellious and um god really placed uh, a special burden on my heart for other people that have been rejected um, in in churches and, and things like that and felt like, you know, that they were judged or uh, put down or condemned for the way that they decide to express themselves, right? And and it's it's just the way I like to express myself sometimes, you know, I'm an artist, and I, a lot of the times I just like to express that outwardly through the way that I dress. And um, for me, it's, it's artistic, you know, our heavenly father is loving. And I, I think part of being childlike, right, is, is just, for me, it's, it's playing dress up and just being expressive. And so it's something that I really have fun with. And the lesson behind me keeping my style, and I know, of course, right now, you know, I've still got my wild hair color, but I'm a little dressed down today because it's more casual. Um, but the lesson is that it's, it's really important to understand that God doesn't look on our outer appearances. He looks at the heart. And what matters is that I've had the heart change, you know, I have the new heart that Jesus promises to those that believe in him as their as <laughs> believe in him as their savior. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was something that was, like I said, it was put on my heart uh, to make the videos, you know, and to use that as a means to reach out to, to others uh, that are of that subculture community, because the lesson that I've recently learned is that culture in itself is not inherently, I don't believe it's inherently evil. I just think that the enemy, you know, a lot of times he takes a lot of those things and perverts it and twists it. Mm -hmm. And I think that even that sort of subculture as, as, you know, even with alternative emo punk goth being, you know, more dark, um, that it's redeemable. Truly. Yeah. I mean, I, me being, you know, a part of that subculture and, and I, if I'm redeemable, you know, anyone else is redeemable that wow. that's also, you know, into that sort of subculture, you know, God, God loves all of us. Amen. Yeah. I love that. That's so <laughs> true because, you know, I haven't really shared my story for God's glory yet. You don't all don't know my story. You don't know everybody's story. And sometimes we judge so quickly. And, and the first time I saw your picture, I was like, oh, but then I was like, wait, no, no, I hear Jesus. So I know it was there. Can you tell a little bit about that story? Uh, like, where did you get started? How did you, how did you either grow up or was Jesus even there in the beginning? Okay. So a little background story for you, as far as uh, my younger years, uh, I had a very troubled um, childhood. I had very troubled teenage years were absolutely most likely my worst. Uh, I, nobody had ever shared the gospel with me. Right. And all the experiences that I had with church and religion were very negative experiences. And uh, I honestly 
I found, I found comfort in, in dark things that was comforting to me. I, I didn't really have, um, I didn't really have a healthy relationship with my parents. I, I really, I had a very negative outlook on God. Um, I believe that if there was a God and he did exist that, you know, it was cruel of him to allow me to be born into, you know, the abuse and like the traumatic life I had, um, as, as a child. Mm -hmm. And so the thing that happened was that, um, I got really hungry for knowledge. I got really hungry on this quest for truth. I started looking into other spiritual things. I got mixed up sort of in the new age a little bit and things like that. And, um, I, I, I was, you know, seeing through a lot of the new age deceptions and, and things like that. I was, as I was continuing to continuing to hunger for truth and, um, at around the age of 20, right. I, I was really depressed. I was really suicidal and I, but I, I had this deep longing to know if there was an afterlife and if there was something more than just this. Cause I was like, there's no way that I was just born into this life where I feel hopeless and that there's just nothing more than this. And I'm just going to die. And there's nothing more than this. So I, I, I started seeking, right. And uh, we're told, you know, in scripture that when we seek the Lord with all of our hearts, he will be found by us. So, um, as I was continuing to seek, the Lord revealed himself to me as, as God, because I, I started to come to this realization that there had to be an intelligent creator, that, uh, things in my life weren't just happening by coincidence and that there was, there had to be an intelligent creator who had purposed and orchestrated the things that were going on in my life. And I was like, wow, I was like, okay, so this God is, he, he's awesome. He, he clearly is super intelligent and he's created all of these things. I want to know personally who you are, which God are you, you know, like, are you, you know, what are these Buddha, like which, which one's right, right? Which religion is right. And so, um, as I was continuing to seek and I asked God to reveal himself to me with an earnest heart that I wanted to know, God, if you're real, who are you? Um, he started to reveal himself to me. The, 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 the really, the big epiphany moment, aha moment that I had that it's the God of the Bible was that I was 20 years old. I was seeing this older man and, um, I traveled across country with this guy. And <laughs> so long story short is, um, I, walked into his house one day and I wasn't very familiar with scripture or the Bible. And I thought I was in love with this man, but I was starting to realize that I didn't even have a clue what love really was. Okay. So, uh, and I, not being familiar with the Bible, not being familiar with scripture, I walked into his house and the first thing I see is like really big in bold, like calligraphy style letters. And it was, uh, the passage in Corinthians about love what love truly is. I think, I believe it's second Corinthians 13. I don't remember the, all the numbers. I, I, I know the verse though. Right. Yeah. Love is patient. Love is kind. Right. Love, it's the Bible love. verse from every wedding I've ever been to. Right. I think. Yeah. <laughs> love is, um, it keeps no records of wrongs. Love never fails. Right. And I mean like that really sunk in and it really hit me. Right. And I was just like, Oh, wow. I think we're on to something. So with that being said, right, I ended up meeting his, uh, this man that I was seeing his ex-wife and it was interesting, right? Because she was dressed really goth and she was an older woman and she had like black and white stockings, long black hair, but she was just absolutely beautiful. And I felt this peace and this joy and this kindness that came from her that I had not experienced from anyone else where I just felt really comfortable with her. And she was the first person to ever really truly share the gospel with me. And I was like, wow, it is Jesus. And now I'm, I understand what it is that he came here to accomplish and 
and that, you know, everything I thought was all wrong. <laughs> so that's a little bit about my testimony about how God revealed himself to me and how I came to know the Lord, you know, coming out of being a troubled teenager and things like that. So, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting that she had that goth dress on. So it made you feel comfortable, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it was somebody that I felt uh, was relatable to me, you know, and I felt un somebody that could um, understand me and wasn't going to judge me based on the way that I looked or the music I liked. Right. So, you know, that that really touched my heart. And I realized that, you know, if it took somebody like her to reach me, you know, how much more is God going to use me to reach other people like myself who are like-minded with similar interests, similar styles, similar pasts to also, you know, reach those that, that are so far from him. So, yeah. I love that. He needs to put people in every single genre, nation, people group. I mean, yes. <laughs> often think that he, you know, he goes to, that he, we often think <clears throat> in America that we are, you know, oh, where are these Christians? We're going to go into Africa and all these things. They're, when we go in every week, stand out. What about the people in Africa that get saved? And they stay there and they still look, and I don't mean all Africa. Africa is a big, big country, right? So yeah, yeah. I, it's hard to even <laughs> say that. But there, I'm, I'm more thinking of, um, yeah, wh whatever country, the people that already live there, if they can be saved, then they can go into that country more easily. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. If I'm in, Korea, I will stand out. And if I'm <laughs> dressed like this, and if I go to Fidelity or Bank of America, and I try to witness to someone in a blue suit, there's going to be some disconnect, right? Yeah. If, if, if you were to go like right now, if I went into a club, a, uh, even a satanic club or, or a nightclub, I could get in, you know, dress like this, I could get in. But you, you'd walk right in, like, whatever i can get in there and so right. i think there's a difference it, it's it's like he uses the right tool for the right job right 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 i think about um rahab the spy right how she blended in and how god's used that to speak to me right like so like i i can go in and blend in and then it gives me an opportunity and then people are surprised to know that you know when i have the chance to witness like that I'm a believer. So amen, amen. amen. I love that. And I mean, I I did wear some goth-ish clothes at times when I was a, a young person, teenager. And yeah, there I think it was because personally for me there was some darkness inside of me that I hadn't gotten out yet. And so I felt comfortable. And I think you used that word comfortable because it yeah. wasn't a stark difference. Like I was depressed. And that style was depressive. So it worked and it wasn't healthy for me at the time, but I wasn't healthy either. So. Right. Right. Yeah. I completely. So uh, as far as me personally, keeping the alternative fashion, while the darkness is no longer inside of me, <laughs> um, I, I look at it right so much with the alternative fashion that it's, it's, First of all, just the point, right, of not judging by appearances and understanding that it's what's on the inside of us that matters, right? It's the internal change of being a new creature and that, you know, I, I want alter other alternative people because I still dress that way, right? I still express myself that way. I might not be all made up today, but I still like to express myself that way, that um, we're still free to be creative and express ourselves in Christ because our creator is an artist. He, he is the greatest artist and creative of all, of all. So, you know, and, um, that like, it's okay to be different. It's okay to be expressive and be unique and, and not try to fit into not for people to understand that, that we don't need to fit into a box, you know, or, or some, these, these legalistic rules and traditions of how, you know, um, people should 
present themselves as as Christians because I understand right the concept of modesty and doing all things for God's glory. But like I said, as a creative and as an expressive, for me, it's really about just self-expression and just having fun and still being able to be true to myself and my identity in Christ. Yeah. And not trying to fit into these expectations that other people have of me as a Christian and how I should dress <laughs> or, or, you know, uh, present myself. That's, that's the word. <laughs> I think of the fishermen, right? The, the ones that were called from the sea, they didn't suddenly dress as a Pharisee or a Sadducee. Right. right. <laughs> they just, they wore their, their day clothes. They wore what they had. And that's true. Of probably so many that they just wore what they had and they went off and just started preaching Jesus. And it doesn't mean their whole self has changed. Um, I think there's a person, and, and many people know that there's a person that um, just got saved out of uh, a satanic church, a pastor of a satanic church. I, I right? was just going to say, I saw that on TikTok and I was just blown away. Right. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> yes. And then there's so many people that unfortunately are kind of in a space and space about, hey, you know, you don't look the part, you don't act the part. And I'm like, dude, these just got saved. He just got saved. Right. Like, the sons of thunder weren't looking the part when they were walking with Jesus. Give him time. Like, and he might never look the white shirt collar part. But Jesus doesn't need him to. Like, no. I don't know his personal life. That's between him and Jesus. Honestly, and and that's that's a huge part of his testimony as well, coming out of all of that and having you know, because I saw he has got the face tattoos and all of that going on. And I'm just like, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that's going to be what God uses his testimony, where he's come from, his appearance to reach other people that, you know, have been lied to. You, you can't look like that and be saved, be a Christian. You're not worthy. You're, you're not going to be good enough. And and it's just, I think that's awesome. I was super excited to see his testimony. And I, I felt it. I felt the Holy Spirit. I was like, this man truly has had an experience and encounter awesome. with the Lord. <laughs> yeah, I was, when he, when he started sharing, I'm like, he knows Jesus. He knows my God because the way he talked about him. And you can kind of tell when somebody is totally rocked by the Holy Spirit. Like, like whoa, <laughs> they know the Lord. And uh, it was just, it was awesome. And, I, you know. There's others too, but everybody's different. I, I've told people like, I want all kinds of people on my show because if I only get Todd White's, not everybody knows that that life, like he's got a great ministry. He's amazing minister of the gospel, but not everybody relates to him. And, you know, uh, whoever else, like not everybody relates to them. So I want all kinds of people like yourself, artists and, and conservatives and all over to just share God's goodness poured out on all of us. Yeah, because, you know, there's diversity. There's meant to be diversity in God's kingdom. Absolutely. I truly believe that we come in all shapes, all sizes, from all backgrounds, from all walks of life. Yeah, <laughs> and absolutely. We all have different purposes. Yeah. yeah. I actually just saw a brief um shot from somebody who had taken a picture of a, a young lady, I don't know, 10, 11, whatever, and an older woman, like in her probably 70s, 80s, preaching together. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. I love it. It's cool. Yeah. Because it's all the walks of life, right? Everybody gets rocked by Jesus, hopefully at some time. I would love that. You know, and it doesn't doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what country you're in or what you're doing. You can pull anybody right. out. And one thing I wanted to mention that I've heard a lot of people try to argue is that, you know, we're told to come as we are, but not stay as we are. But the fact of the matter is that the, the, the changing happens internally and it's a work done by the Holy Spirit and it has nothing to do with us and what we're doing or not doing. Yeah. It's truly just his spirit doing the work in and through us and on us, because I know that the harder I try to be a good person or walk the walk and talk the talk, the harder I try to do that in my own strength and my own power, the, the more I'm going to fail epically. <laughs> yeah, no, that's very true. Before I had Holy Spirit, it was, it was rough. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, yeah. I was like, I knew I shouldn't sin and I knew I needed to change, but my gosh, it was hard. Exactly. That's, <laughs> that's why oh, Jesus said, I want you to wait up here. I want you to go in the upper room and stay here until the comforter comes <laughs> because he didn't want them to go out in the world and make a mess. Just stay here. So the Holy Spirit comes because so grateful for his spirit. <laughs> yeah. How did that you kind of share, but how how did that go down? Like you you met that woman. And then how did how did Holy Spirit, how did Jesus God show himself? Okay. So she presented the gospel to me and I started having the epiphany. So it gets a little deeper from there. Um, I started to ask, I started because I had that encounter, I started to realize things. And I was asking a lot of questions at that point. I was like, okay, Jesus, if you're God and you're real, that means that, you know, the afterlife is real. And that means there must be a heaven and there must be a hell. And that's scary because if, you know, if there is a hell, there's a chance that I could end up there. So I got scared. And around that same time, I ended up contracting a staph infection and, uh, it was, it was just quickly eating away at, at my, my flesh. Right. And I, I, I started to recognize as I was, as I was talking to God and realizing that he was real out loud, he was starting to reveal things to me. And I didn't really recognize fully until one night I was in a place of desperation. I was scared for my life. I didn't know if I was going to make it because I thought either the infection was going to take my leg or it was going to get in my bloodstream. And I got down on my knees and I, I, I literally didn't just get down on my knees willingly. I fell on my knees. I was completely brought to my knees in desperation and crying out to Jesus. And he met me there. He met me there and he let me know. Um, he told me that I was in chains and um, I, I didn't really fully recognize, right? I didn't understand what that meant because I didn't know the Bible and I didn't really understand much about Christianity because I tried to avoid it <laughs> so, so hard, right? And that I was a wicked person and that I was in need of a savior and let me know that. And, and he offered me freedom. And I had to acknowledge in that moment for the first time that, wow, I have been a wicked, sinful person because I thought I was a good person. I truly did in my own standard. Right. And he let me know and he offered me freedom. And because um, I was starting to feel, you know, just sick and tired of being sick and tired of my ways. Right. <laughs> and on top of that, you know, just in this moment of fearing for my life and he offered me freedom. And I was thinking, you know, if I were to not survive this and I know now that, that, you know, clearly Jesus is God. Um, I, I, I want to know where I'm going to end up when I die. And, and like I said, he, he met me there in my bedroom alone in my place of desperation. And he revealed himself to me through the Holy spirit at that moment, speaking to me as Jesus. Mm. And I was like blown away. I was just like, Jesus is speaking to me. <laughs> now, did you see him? Incredible. Did I did you... not. I did not see him. I didn't. It was just him speaking to me through the Holy Spirit and me hearing his voice through, through his spirit. Gotcha. And I was just blown away. I mean, I couldn't deny it. I knew because of just his and feeling his presence, right? The peace and just this presence of sovereignty and, and just this, just the, it's an undeniable, just unmistakable, his presence. Right. So, right. It's yeah. so beautiful that he is willing to engage with us. And I know right. he doesn't with everybody, but when he does, it's so beautiful it and is. it's so life changing. It's like, you're going in one direction and then boop, all of a sudden you're going in a completely different direction because you had <laughs> right. a meeting with Jesus. Absolutely. <laughs> I was just going to say that it's kind of similar, you know, uh, to the road to Damascus experience where, you know, Paul, uh, Paul, you know, is on his way and then suddenly he's struck blind and then and Jesus lets him know it's me. <laughs> and it was kind of similar to one of those experiences for me. I was just like dumbfounded. I was like, wow. Okay. God is real. And he's speaking to me. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. I'll never, 
and it changed me for the rest of my life. That one encounter is all it takes. To it really away. is. It really is <laughs> that one encounter. I, I think it's very interesting. Can you look back and see now that you've come to where you are, can you look back and see him in many other places in your past? Yes, yes, yes. It, it was it was after that that initial encounter I started to realize that there were many times in my childhood where he was present and there were times in my teenage years where he was also speaking to me and he was present i just didn't know him i didn't recognize him i didn't understand and then you know when when i encountered him then and there i recognized him from those past experiences because he would use he he's used uh, because I'm really passionate about music, a means to to speak to me and communicate and get messages across to me through music very often. And when I was 15, there was this song by a band called Falling Up that was called Falling in Love. And I heard it on like a music video on YouTube. And I really liked the song, but you know, I, I like I said, I wasn't raised in church or anything. And I, I realized that it was a Christian band, right? But I didn't really understand and know much about God's love. And after I had encountered him, um, it, it, I could reflect back and, and was reminded of these times where like I could feel his presence and he was expressing his love for me and he was using that song. And so now it is one of my favorite worship songs. Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I, there's been many occasions now where I, I look back and I see before I came to know the Lord personally, had my personal encounter, um, many ways that he was expressing his love and pursuing me throughout my life. Yeah, he's he just he relentlessly, consistently pursues us. Yeah, like it's beautiful. <laughs> it's amazing that he is willing to do that. I that's that's the grace. That's what changes our hearts and leads us to repentance the kindness yeah. the goodness of god because yeah. otherwise even i call it my ticket to heaven i would have my ticket to heaven i'd be saved but what about the rest of life like right exactly <laughs> so i would just go right. do life and nothing would change but what really changed my heart was that engagement that encounter and then holy spirit yeah yeah it's his love it's his yeah. love <laughs> it's so so amazing how would you tell people in that in that situation in that darkness or whatever how would you tell them what would you tell them where where do i even begin um so what would i say to someone in that dark place that i have am all too familiar with right and even even for me right being saved up until recently in my life, I was still more familiar with darkness um, because for a long time, because of religious trauma, I didn't really understand fully my new identity in Christ. It's taken a long time to mature. And also um, my authority <laughs> in Christ and being, the, the, being able to take that authority and use it properly over and, and, and it, and having advantage over the kingdom of darkness. So um, to someone else that was in that dark place of not knowing Jesus, of, of just being filled with um, just bitterness and, and suffering and despair and just no light, um, that there is so much more to life that that you have yet to discover and that um, there is a God who absolutely loves you, who sees you, who wants you to know him intimately because he already knows you and that he wants to give you an abundant life. He wants to give you peace and joy. He wants to remove uh, the, the, the burdens and the pain and the suffering and to give you uh, hope in a future that you never even imagined was possible and um to and also that uh nobody nobody is beyond his reach nobody is beyond redemption and 
you were worth it to him, even if you feel like you're not worth it, that he gave up his life for you willingly mm -hmm. to have a relationship with you, but to also give you forgiveness and freedom that is permanent. <laughs> So yeah, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> yeah, no, it is emotional. It is emotional Maybe, because it's yeah. so astronomically amazing. But it just, there's, there's barely words for it, for how Absolutely. good he is. Absolutely. There's, there is so much, just so much beauty, so much to be found in Jesus that I just, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful that he would pick me, right? To, to use, I, I think about it and I'm like, wow, <laughs> he picked <Yeah>. me. <laughs> and even if he didn't use us, it's just that he picked us in general, right? That he just was willing exactly. to have a relationship. Right. That he just wants us in general, right? He just is truly just in all of our flaws and all of our messiness and, and how much, you know, we've been so imperfect that he loves us with this unconditional holy perfect just amazing love that is beyond comprehension i know that the more that the deeper i go in my relationship with the lord the the less that i'm aware of how much he really loves me and how great his mercy and grace really is because just when i feel like i'm coming to the end of it there's so much more being poured out yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. absolutely so. Now the question, as you walked, you said there was a lot of darkness where you were before. Mm -hmm. Talk mm -hmm. to me. Did you go through deliverance? What was that like? Were there some things like that? Um, so it's been a link. My process of sanctification, and I'm still going through it. My process of sanctification, my process of maturity has been very lengthy. Um, and uh, for a long time, I... I had a lot of trauma to get to work through and still obviously healing um, and still working through a lot of trauma. I'm still working through a lot of um, issues that were a result of, you know, having authoritarian parents and, you know, not good parenting styles and a bad upbringing. And, and that's resulted in things like me having a difficulty trusting God. Sometimes my perception of him gets clouded. Um, but I, I didn't really have a community with other believers that was healthy. And I, uh, still was, um, tied up in narcissistic abuse from my mom for a long time. Mm -hmm. And now I have more of a distant relationship with her. You know, I'm honest with her about things. Um, we, we have sort of a arm's length relationship, but even though, right, like I hold her accountable now, um, we do still have communication where I'm able to show her the love of Christ, but I, I, I have firm boundaries up now. That's good. I mean, boundaries are huge. When we heal, when we get saved, we get pulled. Sometimes he doesn't pull us out actually of the, of the relationships and of the situations we're in. Right. So it's found, finding what is healthy and how to navigate that family or that job or situation or whatever. And it takes time. Right. Absolutely. So, um, with that being said, as far as wrestling with the darkness and going through deliverance, I, I lived as if, as if I didn't know my identity and my new identity in Christ for a long time because of that lack of community and that lack of fully you know, being solid in my identity in Christ and my authority. And, um, I, I, I did spend quite a bit of time in that familiar darkness, but the fact of the matter is that through all of this, Jesus never left me. He was always with me, always working on me. He's, you know, because he doesn't leave us. Once the Holy Spirit comes in and we're sealed, he stays and he's going to finish what he started, you know, he's our right. He, he, he rides with us till the end of this thing. <laughs> and 
I have gone through quite a bit of deliverance and I've overcome a lot. I've, I've experienced a lot. I've had a lot of encounters with the supernatural. It's honestly a pretty regular, just normal day for me now (laughs) as a believer, um, you know, dealing with and experiencing the supernatural, but yeah, I did have to go through deliverance and I had to, uh, learn to, you know, how to close open doors and, you know, resist how to submit to the Lord and resist the enemy. And it's been a lengthy process, but the good news is right. Is that, like I said, I had, I better understand my authority, you know, prayer and fasting and taking our authority and properly knowing how to use our sword brings victory. So I, I thank the Lord that he's given me victory over a lot a lot of things in my life that I just never even imagined that there was a life outside of. So, yeah. Right. right. It's hard in the darkness to think that there's a light, but once you see it, it's like amazing. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I pray for anybody who's watching that they would have an encounter with the Lord that you would say, if you're even willing say, Hey God, yeah, whatever. Show me, show me. Even if you're like <laughs> testing him, like, show me. And he will, he will. He's so, so good. Right. He's cool. Like that. If you're curious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it might rock your world, but it might be rocking your world in a good way. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Oh, Brianna, thank you for sharing your story today with, for God's glory. And I pray that you're successful in your artistic endeavors and your songwriting. Thank What's you. your kind of niche in songwriting? So because the Lord has blessed me with multiple gifts and talents and interests, I do not have a specific genre, but some things that I like to touch on and um, a few of my gifts and and my niches (laughs) in music, opera, symphonic, like melodic melodic, uh, worship vocals. And uh, that style of vocals, like opera vocals, um, and that I can range from that to like rock vocals to rap. I, I like to write raps, and I can I can do that as well. So it's it, it's different elements. So yeah, but it's it's cool stuff. I'm excited Man. to see where God takes me with this. So. <laughs> Amen. Well, I pray he blesses you in it all. Gosh, thank you for sharing. If you're watching today, I've shared this with someone who might need to know what we talked about today, that it might actually change their world. Share with somebody today, please, and have a wonderful, blessed day in Jesus' name.